Understanding the impact of numeric factors on ordered categories such as education levels is complex. Thus, in this video, we uncover how a numeric predictor wage shapes education levels, our ordinal outcome ranked from high school to college to university. Along the way, we'll extract and interpret the cumulative and exceedance probabilities at key education thresholds and much more. We'll use a free wage dataset from the ISLR package to make things more intuitive with simplify education into three ordered categories – high school, college and university. We then fit our ordinal regression model using the cumulative link model function from the ordinal package. Our model predicts education level based on the numeric predictor wage. As any ordinal model, our model assumes proportional odds, meaning the relationship between wage and the odds of moving to a higher education level is consistent across the transitions from high school to college and from college to university. To check the proportional odds assumption in our model, we could start with the Brandt test from the GoFCAT package. A p-value below 005 signals a violation of this assumption. Yet a more reliable approach lies in visualization through the plot x min ordinal function from the RMS package. This graph displays a solid line tracing the actual salary means of the predictor across the ordered outcome categories and a dashed line showing the expected predicted values if the proportional odds assumption holds true. When the slides align closely, as they do in our case, the assumption is satisfied and we are good to go. But if you are still unsure why you shouldn't just trust the Brandt test, Think about the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. It often finds that data isn't normally distributed in large datasets, even when the distribution looks almost like a perfect bell curve. Once we have fitted the ordinal regression model, we need to interpret results. Our model reveals that higher wages slightly increase the chance of being in a higher education level. Specifically, a one-unit increase in wage increases the log odds of being in a higher education level by 0.0289, a small yet profoundly significant effect. Given that our proportional odds assumption holds, this effect of wage is the same across all education thresholds. And that's where most tutorials stop, using only the summary function and interpreting only one number. But we are just getting started. For instance, the summary function provides a quick overview, but it lacks some key details we need, like 95% confidence intervals and odds ratios. These measures are much more useful and easier to interpret than the default log odds trend with standard error. So let's solve both problems first. To get the 95% confidence intervals, we can use the mTrends function from the mMeans package. And for odds ratios, we'll use the tab model function from the sjplot package. In our example, the odds ratio for wage is 1.03. This means that for every one unit increase in wage, the odds of having a high education level increase by a factor of 1.03, which is a 3% increase. The output from tab model also shows that the 95% confidence interval for this odds ratio is between 1.02 and 1.04. Since this interval doesn't include 1, we can be confident that the result is statistically significant and not just due to random chance. The small p-value also confirms this significance. And while it's true that in the real world education level often predicts wage, our example simply shows that in this specific data set, higher wages are associated with higher education levels. If we ask for a reference grade from a fitted model, we'll see three multivariate response levels of education – high school, college and university. And since I mixed up multivariate and multivariable before, for clarity, especially for beginners, here is the distinction. 
Multivariate means several outcomes, while multivariable means several predictors. A picture is worth a thousand words, so let's visualize our model's results. First, we can use the plot model function for a quick visualization of predicted probabilities for each level on separate subplots. To create a more polished plot with all levels combined, we can use the emip function. Interestingly, by treating our outcome variable education as a predictor and setting mode equals probability in the immense package, we directly obtain the predicted probabilities for each level. On this plot shows the relationship between which and the probability of being in each education category. Red represents high school, green is for college, and blue is for university. As wage increases, the probability of having only high school education drops sharply, suggesting it's very difficult to earn a high income with just a high school degree. At mid-level wages, college becomes the most likely education level. Then, at high wages, a university or PhD education dominates, making it highly unlikely to earn less than 100k with these advanced degrees. The trends here are quite clear, but we should always be careful with non-linear slopes or patterns. For instance, using the mTrends function, we can calculate the slopes at different salary points. For example, at the average salary of 114k, we can see that the probability of having only a high school education declines, while the probability for college and university degrees increase significantly. However, when we specifically ask mTrends to estimate the slopes at a salary of 200k, we see that the slope for having a college degree is now negative. This change highlights a crucial point. It's always a good idea to visualize predictions before drawing conclusions from the coefficients alone. And by the way, by adding only one word, pairwise, to our code, we can also get the absolute differences between these slopes and determine if those differences are statistically significant, which provides us with even more inferences. But here is the thing. While analyzing the differences between slopes can be useful, comparing differences between specific probabilities is often more practical. The good news is we can use the immense function to do exactly this for numeric predictors. We just need to tell the function at which key values we want to know the exact probabilities. For instance, for a 300k salary, the probability of having only a high school degree is extremely low, at 0.3%, so close to zero that it's not statistically significant. This 0.3% represents an outlier, like a highly successful college dropout, Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg. But it's a very rare outcome. Even with a college degree, the probability of reaching a 300k salary stays below 4% and is only a marginal possibility with a p-value of 0073. Since both of these probabilities are so low, there is no statistical difference between them. In other words, without a university or PhD degree, the chances of earning a 300k salary are practically zero and a college degree alone won't get you there. Interestingly, it's also important to differentiate between slopes and probabilities. For example, at a salary of 100k, the slopes for high school and college probabilities are significantly different. High schools is declining, while colleges is increasing. However, the actual probabilities of earning exactly 100k are the same and not statistically different. Similarly, at a salary of 200k, the positive slope for a university degree differs significantly from the negative slope for a college degree. But the probabilities of having exactly 200k salary are still equal. Lastly, by swapping the places of education and wage in the immense function, we can also compare probabilities for different wages on the same curve. Specifically, for college graduates, the probabilities of earning 100k and 200k are identical. Now, as defined in the previous video, the cumulative probability refers to the chance of achieving a rating at 
or below a certain level. For example, for an education at the threshold college university, it's the likelihood of getting at least college degree, which in our case includes both high school and college. By using the linear mode in our model's reference grade, we can explore all possible thresholds or, as the immense package calls them, cut points. And the cool thing about these cut points is that they are used by immense function as synthetic predictor cut, even though it wasn't explicitly part of our original model formula. This plot shows the cumulative predicted probabilities of education levels as a function of wage. The two curves represent different cut points or thresholds for education. The red curve shows the cumulative probability of having an education level of high school or less. As wage increases, this probability drops sharply. At a wage of around 200, the probability is near zero, suggesting that it's highly unlikely for someone with a high school degree to earn a high wage. The blue curve shows the cumulative probability of having an education level of college or less. This curve also declines as wage increases, but at a much slower rate than the red curve. At higher wages, the probability of having a college degree or less is also low, but not as low as the probability for a high school degree. At a wage of 114k, the slopes for both cumulative probabilities are negative and significant, meaning a higher salary corresponds to a lower probability of having an education level below university. The difference between these slopes is also significant, with the red curve declining almost three times more sharply than the blue curve. However, since these trends are estimated only at the average salary, it's often more revealing and practical to check specific cumulative probabilities at the range of key salary values, like 100, 200, and 300 Ks. Using the means function to examine specific salary values, we see some clear patterns. At a salary of 100 K, the probability of having a college degree or less is very high, at 93% which is significantly higher than the 49% probability of having only a high school education or less. At a 200k salary, the probabilities drop for both groups, but the probability of having a high school degree or less is still significantly lower, 5%, than having a college degree or less, 43%. However, at a salary of 300 Ks, the probabilities for both groups become extremely low. Specifically, the probability of having a high school degree or less is just 0.3%, while the probability of having a college degree or less is 4%, and the difference between them is not statistically significant. This suggests that at very high salaries, both high school and college degrees become very rare and the higher education level is required. Finally, exceedance probability is the chance of achieving a rating above a certain level. For example, at the college-university threshold, this is the likelihood of having an education level higher than college, in this case, a university degree or a PhD. To calculate exceedance probabilities using our previous code, the only change needed is to set the mode to xprop instead of qmprop. The red curve represents the probability of having an education level higher than high school. This probability starts low and increases sharply as wage rises. The blue curve shows the probability of having an education level higher than college. This probability also increases as wage increases, but at a slower rate than the red curve. At the wage of 114k, the M-trends results show that the slopes for both exceedance probability curves are positive and statistically significant. This indicates that as salary increases, the probability of having a high education level also increases. The contrast section reveals that the difference between these two slopes is also statistically significant with the slope for the high school group increasing more than twice as fast as the slope for the college group.
Here again, using a means instead of M trends allows us to get probabilities at key salary points. For example, at a salary of 100k, the probability of having an education level higher than high school is about 51%, which is significantly higher than the 7% probability of having an education level higher than college. At 200k, the probability of having a degree higher than high school jumps to about 95%, while the probability of a degree higher than college is about 57%. Both are statistically significant and the difference between them is still very large and significant. However, at 300k both probabilities are extremely high, with the probability of having a degree higher than high school at almost 100% and the probability of a degree higher than college at about 96%. And this wage, the difference between these two probabilities is no longer statistically significant which makes total sense. And if this video made sense to you, give it a like and consider subscribing. To get the complete R code, you can join the channel at the coffee level or above.